To start with, I was a bit unsure of the eraser because it doesn't work like the eraser does in Procreate or in Concepts where as you rub something out, it just rubs out the line, you know, like that you're drawing over. Good morning, friends. Welcome to a very gloomy Friday, honestly. I don't know if you can, no, it's not gonna focus, but it's been gray and rainy here for like, I wanna say almost two weeks. I think it has literally been two weeks. Just way too long. Um, not what I signed up for when I moved to Spain. And if I look at the weather app, ooh, it's actually promising a tiny bit of sunshine on Sunday. So that'll be nice, cause yeah, haven't seen the sun much lately and I definitely feel like it's been affecting my mood. But anyway, here we are, we've gotten through the week. It's been a good um, productive week all around. I'm starting work a little bit earlier today because I've got some mentoring calls this evening um, and you know, wanna make sure that I get my work in before then. So yeah, just eating my breakfast. I've been filming some clips for my daily routine video that I think will be coming out after this. So stay tuned for that. I've been putting together like an explanation of the changes that I made to like have a better work-life balance um, and just, yeah, have, have some more time for myself in the mornings because I felt like I was just like waking up, rushing to the computer and like, you know, getting into the day and just never having any like margin, you know? So yeah, stay tuned for that. But yeah, I'm just gonna eat my breakfast, um, my usual avocado and cream cheese on toast with an egg and uh, get into it. Sorry for the lighting. Oh my God, I'm a terrible YouTuber. live stream I think um, and while I do some wireframing. Normally I live stream in the afternoons but because I have mentoring sessions and also a couple of longer meetings this afternoon that's not gonna be possible so yeah we'll see how our morning live stream goes. I'm sure that there'll be much less people turning up because most people are based in the US. Starting my day with my usual, checking through Slack, going through notifications that you know messages that came through after I signed off. Right now I'm reviewing a video walkthrough, like a loom. Actually he uses something else, clean shop, not loom, um, that David, the designer on my team uses to like share an update on a project, which is so great. Like for working asynchronously, he just like makes a little video, walking through, talking through his thinking, sharing the designs, um, and then I'll go in the Figma file and leave some feedback as well. I won't show you because I haven't asked his permission and I don't know if he like, I don't know, wants to share this stage of the project. But yeah, he's doing great work. So um, it's very exciting to see it and get feedback on it. I don't know, what is up with this cat? But he's just very, very meowy and um, running around all over the place, aren't you? What do you want? What can I do for you? I don't know. <laughs> Okay, I've just updated the Figma app on my iPad and I'm excited to get in and try out FigJam with this yeah, new functionality. So that I'm like, I don't know, not going in totally blind on my stream, I'm just gonna open up a random FigJam file and um, just like get a feel for it. But we'll actually use it for the first time live on the stream. I think this is gonna be really good. Cool, I'm excited, all right. Um, I'm gonna get started streaming then. I have my second monitor set up over here that I've been using recently for live streams so that I can like see the chat easier. Headphones on, let's get into it. Testing the volumes. Hello friends. Well, 
it was really fun to hang out and do a morning stream. I definitely think that Fig Jam will become my tool for wireframing from now on because it was so awesome to be able to, let me just show you in case you didn't watch the stream, uh, what I was able to do. You can copy and paste things from Fig Jam into Figma. So I have here the wireframe that I drew in the Fig Jam file. This, this was the file. You can like copy, well, let me just okay, command C, come over here and paste into a Figma file, which is really cool. I knew you could copy and paste things from Fig Jam into Figma, but I didn't think that your like drawn elements would come through as vectors, you know, this is, this is a way to get hand-drawn vectors into your Figma file. Very, very cool. So yeah, that was handy to be able to put the wireframe right in next to, I don't know what you call this stage of wireframe, like actually readable and understandable wireframe. I don't know. I don't know what to call it. But yeah, that was cool. As you know, if you've seen, I'm going to try to get the corner right. This video, please tell me, is in that corner. <laughs> that was the wireframing, like how I wireframe websites video that I made showing you how I used to, anyway, do all my wireframing in the concepts app on iPad. But I think Fig Jam will be the new go-to for wireframing because of how, you know, integrated it is with the tool I then use to do the high fidelity stuff. It does have its quirks. Um, like one thing I found out very quickly is you can't just do like a double tap, tap with two fingers to undo, which is what you can do in um, Procreate. As I was drawing, I would find that I would accidentally draw with my hand, like the um, base side of side of my palm, I guess, um, a bunch on the screen. But the and the toolbar at the bottom, you can't move it. Like it, it stays stuck to the bottom. And I feel like since I'm drawing like this, let me demonstrate, drawing like this, um, that the, I felt like the toolbar was right where I, I didn't want to press anything accidentally. Um, so I was like a little bit hesitant about that, but it actually turned out to work fine. Like I didn't accidentally drag a sticky note in or anything like that. But yeah, I just would love to be able to have it sitting on this side of the screen instead, you know, instead of being at the bottom for, for when I'm drawing. The tool does nice smoothing. Like if I, let's see if I can hold it up like this and draw for you. If I draw a really crappy line, ugh, it like makes it nice and smooth around the edges. That was a terrible demonstration. You're just gonna have to try it out for yourself and believe me. <laughs> yeah, the highlighting's nice. To start with, I was a bit unsure of the eraser because it doesn't work like the eraser does in Procreate or in Concepts where as you rub something out, it just rubs out the line, you know, like that you're drawing over. Instead, if I zoom in and show you, I don't know why I'm doing it this way. Um, so yeah, I can erase this whole square right here by just going, Bloop, and then it all disappears um, instead of it just like erasing where my pencil had dragged. To start with, I thought that was going to be a problem um, just because it felt weird, it wasn't what I used to, but turned out really like it. I think it makes much more sense because it's you don't have to be super accurate with what you're erasing and you don't end up accidentally like erasing part of a line next door um, and then like having to fill it in again or something. Definitely does feel like it's drawing tools that are designed for the purpose that I'm using it for, right? Which it is. So yeah, that's why I think also it's going to be what I do my wireframing in going forward. Anyway, the next thing that I'm going to do is um, document a little bit of the wireframe that I just set up. Let me turn the guides off so you can see it a bit better. This is the wireframe. I think it was this one that I liked that I ended up on for our product overview page. So I'm just going to, first of all, I need to mock it up on mobile before I show the team. Um, just because that's always, I feel like mobile lives in my head most often at this stage. Like I know what I'm going to do with each of these pieces on mobile. Um, or know I could very easily figure it out. But it's always a question the team asks is, what does this look like on mobile? Which is a very fair question. Good thing to ask. So I'm going to mock it up and make sure I'm showing them that um, alongside it. But yeah, then also do some like notations and things to walk them through various parts of the design. Like this piece here is gonna be an image that stays sticky. So as you scroll, it'll like go whoop down to the bottom of that container. So it's always sitting next to the text. At least that's what I'm imagining right now. Yeah. I also have my meetings for the day starting in just 50 minutes. And so that is not a whole lot of time. Um, wow, this day is really getting away from me. <laughs> Oh man, 
I feel like today is just like flying by. Whoa. Okay, so since the last time I talked to you, David and I had a call with Joey Banks, who used to work at Figma, is now at Twitter, um, and is doing like design systems consulting. And yeah, we had him give some feedback and some advice and pointers on the marketing design system we're setting up. It was super valuable. And I was kind of like, damn it, I wish that this was not on Friday, honestly, because now I just like want to dig in and be working on our design system. And um, instead I'm in calls mostly for the rest of today. And then obviously it's the weekend and design system work does not happen on the weekend. Still though, that was really great. And now to end up my day, I have a couple of mentoring calls. I just got off one and then I have another coming up in just five minutes here. So I was just reviewing what um, the person who booked a session wants to talk about. But yeah, I just had a really great um, chat with someone who wanted advice on their website, like the service they're offering to, to clients and the way they're communicating that on their site. So that was really cool. The fun thing about mentoring is that it feels like everyone wants to talk about something different so far. There's always like, I don't know, there's nuances. Like a lot of people want to me to review their portfolio site, but um, everyone is always coming at it from a different angle or like is working in a different niche. So it's really exciting to get to do that. If you would be interested in booking like a mentoring session with me, then I'll leave a link down below in the description. I only offer up six per month because I'm trying to like make sure I'm not getting overwhelmed um, and that I'm still dedicating time to like making my content, doing my job, running the team at ConvertKit. So yeah, not many sessions, but if you want one, then if there's lots available, it'll be at the link below. I think I'll end this video here though. Thank you for watching and coming along with me as I tried Fig Jam on iPad for the first time. Stay tuned because I'm going to have a video coming that's like a Fig Jam 101 that I was planning honestly before I started wireframing um, in it. But yeah, I just want to do an intro walkthrough through the tool like I've done for a few other pieces of software. And my like daily schedule routine video will be coming soon too. So please subscribe if you're not already to my channel and you want to see those videos. It means a lot to me to see that subscriber number tick up, even though I know in the grand scheme of the world it means nothing. It means something to me. <laughs> All right, thanks for watching. Have a good week and I'll see you next time.